Hello and welcome to the next session of the AWS Innovate virtual conference. In this session, we are talking about containers and how you can easily manage large scale container deployments using the Amazon EC2 Container Service or ECS for short. My name is Shailesh Albuquerque. I'm a solutions architect based out of our Bangalore, India office. As a solutions architect, I work with customers to help them architect their applications on AWS. And I'm really excited about architecture patterns such as containers and microservices. Here's an overview of the topics we are going to cover today. We will start with a brief introduction to containers, primarily Docker. There is a great amount of interest in containers. We will talk about some of their benefits and how they enable microservices architecture. Now customers rarely run one or two containers for production applications. Most deployments of containers we see are being run on a cluster. There are several challenges with managing a cluster. We'll talk about ECS, which is our cluster management system for running containers. We'll dive deep into ECS and how we have built it to manage scale and performance. And we'll also provide an overview of how you can run your applications using ECS. So let's start this session with a quick overview of containers. Now, although there are many container formats, in today's session, we are referring to Docker, which has become a popular format for containers. Containers allow you to virtualize an operating system and abstract the underlying infrastructure and OS into an image with a small footprint. You may already be familiar with virtualization at a hardware level, where server hardware, such as physical CPU and memory, is virtualized to run many guest operating systems in an efficient manner. Containers are the next level of abstraction where the OS itself is virtualized. Containers use Linux features such as C groups and namespaces to isolate processes and file systems running on a single OS. This ensures that there is separation and process isolation between various containers running on the same underlying OS. Docker provides a robust set of tools to build and manage images. Images define what runs in the container. The various layers of the images and the version of the application can be defined using a Docker file, and this information can be put into source code repositories. You can use simple commands in the Docker CLI to run these images, and you could also use tools such as continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines to automate the process of building Docker images and running them in your environment. There are several advantages to containers which have made them popular today. The first advantage is that containers are portable. The image that you build is consistent and immutable. So wherever you run it, be it on your developer desktop or a test environment or a production environment, it will run exactly in the same manner. This is probably a primary driver for developers to choose Docker. Containers are flexible. With containers, you can easily decompose a larger application into smaller pieces, much like what happens with microservices. And you can run these together on the same host. You can do that while preventing issues of dependencies and library conflicts. Containers are fast, and really, there are two aspects to the speed. First is that containers start quickly because the OS is already provisioned prior to running a container, and it only takes a few seconds to bootstrap the container and the associated applications. The other aspect is that containers improve speed of releasing and deploying new versions of applications. A team of developers can choose to update their version of the application or images, and only the associated containers can be updated without affecting others. So it's faster to build and release in the development if the development teams are aligned accordingly. Finally, containers are efficient. You can precisely allocate the amount of resources you want for a particular container, like CPU or memory, and this makes efficient use of the underlying infrastructure. 
So with these benefits, we see containers playing a significant role in the way we architect applications today. Instead of creating large monolithic application with a large code base and large development teams, we see customers choosing to decompose their applications into microservices. These microservices are typically developed and managed by smaller teams with each microservice running as a single or a small set of containers. To illustrate this point, you can refer to the slide on your screen. Consider the retail application on the left as a monolith. This application could be having several modules, such as an ordering service or a shipping service within the same monolithic code base. Now, these services most likely have different resource needs and scaling patterns. This retail application can be effectively decomposed into smaller microservices, as you see in the image to your right. For example, we could tease apart an independent service for ordering and another independent service for shipping. These microservices could be encapsulated into their own set of containers and can be independently managed and scaled. Also, if the development teams are aligned along these services, they can independently update their application and release new features and deploy them at their own frequency without affecting other services. As we have seen, containers and Docker are a natural fit for this pattern of microservices. Containers make services simple to model. The application and all its dependencies are packaged into a single image using a Docker file. Containers support any application and any language. The image is versioned artifact that can be stored in a repository just like your source code. This makes applications easy to test and deploy because you're building from a single artifact. Containers also simplify deployment. It is quite straightforward to deploy stateless services where each new deployment or release is a new set of containers. This reduces any dependencies or conflicts with other services. Before we get to container management, we need to discuss scheduling in the context of containers. Scheduling a container or a group of containers, also referred as tasks, means loading or running a single container or task on your host or a cluster by specifying the required resources like compute, memory, and network ports. I'll be using the term hosts interchangeably with instances. Here, instance refers to an EC2 instance. The Docker CLI is great if you want to run a container or a set of containers on your laptop or on a single host. But it's challenging to scale from a single container to thousands of containers. Now, you're suddenly managing a cluster, and managing a cluster is really hard. When you're dealing with a cluster, you need a way to intelligently place your containers on the instances that have the resources and that means you need to know the state of everything in your cluster. For example, at any given point in time, you need to know what instances in your cluster have available resources like memory and network ports, and if you need to add more underlying instances to increase capacity. You'll also need to handle situations when a container or an instance that is running a container dies. How would you recover from the failure of a container? How would you ensure that containers that are scheduled are registered with load balances? How would you roll out a new version of your application or update the containers in a rolling deployment or a blue-green type of deployment? Also, can you extend your software delivery tool sets like your existing CI CD pipelines to integrate with the cluster management system? These are the questions and challenges that our customers were facing as they were running Docker at scale on AWS. And this led us to build ECS. So let's now look at Amazon EC2 Container Service, or ECS. ECS is a highly scalable, high-performance cluster management service. You can use Amazon ECS to schedule the placement of containers across your cluster. You can also integrate your own scheduler or third-party schedulers to meet your specific requirements. 
To fully appreciate the value of ECS, we need to look underneath the hood of ECS. I'll describe the various components of ECS to show you how we have solved some complex challenges in managing a distributed cluster at scale. The first component is a resource manager. The resource manager is responsible for keeping track of resources like memory, CPU, and network ports, and the availability of these resources at any given time in the cluster. On the slide, you will see resources which are really EC2 instances spread across two availability zones. These EC2 instances are all running the Docker daemon. ECS works across multiple availability zones, which means you can span your cluster across availability zones to improve the availability of your applications. The next component is the scheduler. The scheduler is responsible for scheduling containers and tasks for execution on the EC2 instances in the cluster. The scheduler contains the algorithms for assigning tasks to nodes or instances in the cluster based on the resources that are available. The scheduler is also responsible for the task execution lifecycle, which means it keeps a track to see if a given task is alive or dead. And in the case the task dies, it will take actions to reschedule it. If you put these two things together, you get the core cluster management functionality of ECS. ECS has a cluster management engine that coordinates the cluster of instances, which is just a pool of CPU, memory, storage, and networking resources. The instances are nothing but EC2 instances that have been checked into a cluster. These instances run in your own VPC, and you can SSH into them. These instances are dynamically scalable, which means you can add additional instances in your cluster or remove them as required by your scaling demands. It is possible to have a single instance cluster or scale to hundreds or thousands of instances. On each instance, we have the ECS agent installed, which communicates with the cluster management engine. The ECS agent processes ECS commands and converts them into Docker commands. The agent instructs the EC2 instances to start and stop the containers and monitor the resources used and available across the cluster. The ECS agent is open sourced and published on GitHub, so you can extend and contribute to it. To coordinate a cluster, we need a single source of truth for all the instances in the cluster and keep track of things like tasks that are running on the instances, the containers that make up the tasks, and the resources available. This is known as cluster state. And at the heart of ECS is a key value store that stores all of this cluster state. This key value store needs to be distributed for durability and availability. But because the key value store is distributed, making sure data is consistent and handling concurrent changes becomes more difficult. For example, if two developers request all the remaining memory resources from a cluster for their container at the same time, only one container can actually provision those resources, and the other would have to be told that their requests could not be completed. Within ECS, we have used Amazon's core distributed systems to handle such concurrent requests at scale. Another unique aspect of ECS is the API layer. We have decoupled the container scheduling from the cluster management. We have opened up the Amazon ECS cluster manager through a set of APIs that allow customers to access all the cluster state information stored in the key value store. This API allows you to connect different varieties of schedulers to ECS. This ensures that you get the benefits of a robust cluster management engine and a key value store, whereas you can choose our default schedulers or you can choose other schedulers with ECS. You can also connect ECS with your continuous integration and continuous delivery pipelines. I hope this gives you a good background on the challenges of managing a distributed cluster and how we have solved these challenges using ECS. Now let's look at some of the benefits of uh, using ECS. 
The obvious benefit is there is nothing to run. By using ECS, you are automatically getting a robust distributed cluster management engine, a scheduler, and a key value store, which you can leverage straight away without installing a single piece of software. It manages all of your cluster state and containers with built-in control and monitoring. You can easily scale from a few containers to thousands of containers just by calling an API and without having to deal uh, with the underlying complexity. To illustrate the point on scaling, the slide shows the result of a test we ran using ECS. Over a three-day period, we scaled our cluster from around 200 instances to over 1,000 instances, as represented by the purple line. The green and the red line show the P99 and P50 latencies. As you can see, they are relatively flat. This demonstrates the performance and stability of ECS, which you can extract even when you scale your cluster to a very high degree. Amazon ECS has two built-in schedulers. One is a scheduler for long-running applications and services, such as user-facing web applications. Another is a scheduler for short-running tasks, like bad jobs. And because ECS provides you with a powerful set of APIs, it allows you to integrate your own custom schedulers, as well as open source schedulers. This allows you to have very flexible methods to do scheduling on ECS. Amazon ECS is built to integrate well with other AWS services. You can set up each cluster in its own virtual private cloud and use security groups to control network access to your EC2 instances. You can use elastic block storage for persistent storage. You can route traffic to containers using elastic load balancers. The newer version of load balancers which are called application load balancers, can register tasks with dynamically allocated ports assigned by ECS. There is native integration with CloudWatch for monitoring and alarms, and you can use CloudWatch to auto-scale your containers or underlying EC2 instances. CloudTrail integration captures every API access for security analysis, resource tracking, and compliance. And a powerful security feature is integration with IAM, which allows you to assi assign IAM roles to tasks and limit the access available on your containers to other AWS resources like S3 or DynamoDB. This ensures that your containers run with improved security. As discussed before, ECS has a simple set of APIs that allows it to be very easy to integrate and extend. The ECS CLI can be used to integrate into your custom scheduler or CI-CD pipeline. The CLI supports Docker Compose, which means you can use Docker Compose to define tasks on ECS. So in essence, you are getting everything that you see in the orange box as an API. This lets you focus your time on developing applications and services rather than doing the undifferentiated heavy lifting of operating and maintaining a container management system, which ECS does so well. Since we're talking about running containers on AWS, I'd also like to discuss an associated service called Amazon EC2 Container Registry, or ECR. Amazon ECR is a fully managed Docker container registry that allows you to store and manage and deploy Docker container images. You don't have to install any software to manage your container registry. Just push your images to Amazon ECR and pull the images when you need to deploy. ECR is really effective when your security requirements are high. ECR transfers your container images over HTTPS and automatically encrypts your images at rest. You can configure policies to manage permissions and control uh, access to your images using IAM users and roles without having to manage credentials directly on your EC2 instances. It is backed by Amazon S3, which is highly uh, scalable and durable. And another important benefit is ECR integrates with ECS and the Docker CLI, allowing you to simplify your development and production workload, workflow. Sorry. You can easily push your container images to ECR using the Docker CLI from your development machine 
and ECS can pull them directly for production deployments. All right, so now we have had a solid understanding of container management, ECS and ECR. Now let's look at how you can run your services, how to get your applications into containers distributed across your cluster. So you start by modeling your application using a task definition. This file defines the containers you want to run together on the same instance. As an example, a task could be a group of containers, one of which could be Nginx, front-ending a Rails app, and a container for memcache, all of which, all of which uh, you would want to run together on an instance. A task definition lets you specify Docker concepts like links to establish network channels between the containers and share volumes needed by all the containers. Task definitions are tracked by name and revision and can be version controlled through a source code repository. In order to create a task definition, you specify the Docker image to be used for the container and you can specify resources such as CPU, memory, network ports and the volumes for each container. You can also specify which containers are essential for the task to run as a whole. This means if a particular container dies, ECS can decide to reschedule the entire task. The task definition is essentially a JSON file. Also as discussed before, you can use Docker Compose to create your task definitions. Once you have defined a task as a task definition, the next step is to schedule this task to run on a cluster of EC2 instances. This instantiates the Docker images and runs them using the specified resource parameters provided in the task definition. ECS also keeps a track of the state of the cluster and all the tasks. It ensures that the desired number of tasks are running and reschedules if tasks fail to run. So to recap, task is a unit of work which is a grouping of related containers that need to run on the same instance. You could have many tasks running on the same instance and this can be controlled to, through the scheduler. Now you may want to run a task as a long running service. For example, a web service that needs to be always available to take requests from users. ECS has a scheduler that allows you to run long running tasks like web applications. This scheduler is called a service scheduler. In the case of a service, you would reference a task definition, specify the number of tasks to run, and optionally place this service behind a load balancer. The scheduler will launch the required number of tasks, and these will be registered with the elastic load balancer. The scheduler will maintain the number of tasks that you run across multiple availability zones, and automatically load balance across availability zones. What would you do if you want to scale a service? Scaling a service is really simple. You just specify the number of tasks that you need and the scheduler will find the resources in your cluster and launch additional tasks. And similarly, if you reduce the number of tasks, the scheduler will accordingly terminate tasks and scale it down. Overall, the architecture shown depicts the functioning of your cluster. ECS maintains the number of desired tasks within your cluster. You can leverage CloudWatch to publish metrics to determine the health of your cluster. You can also auto-scale tasks based on thresholds that you, see, that you set on CloudWatch metrics. ECS offers simple mechanisms when you want to deploy a new version of your application. You can update the tasks with the new version of the Docker images and ECS will start schedule, scheduling these tasks with a new version. In the process, ECS will automatically drain out the connections from the tasks running the older version. Gradually, the tasks with the older version of your applications are drained off, and you are left with a cluster which only has the newer version of your application. Now, you have additional ways to control the number of tasks that can be running while updating a service. Two parameters that control the number of tasks running while updating a service are the minimum healthy percent and the maximum healthy percent. These specify the lower limit and the upper limit of the number of healthy tasks that can be run. By modifying these parameters, you can control the type of deployments. For example, choosing a rolling deployment 
or a blue-green deployment while updating to a newer version of your application. For example, let's say you have set the minimum healthy percent as 50% and the maximum as 100% while updating a service. Essentially, you are instructing ECS that it can drop the number of tasks by half if needed while it works its way launching newer versions of the tasks. This is almost like doing a rolling deployment where half the tasks are updated before the other half. Whereas, if you'd like to maintain full capacity for your older version of tasks, choosing a minimum of 100% and a maximum of 200% provides a blue-green type of deployment. Here, ECS launches new tasks with a revised version and essentially doubles number of tasks that are in the service before removing the older tasks. Hence, you can see how ECS simplifies your deployment processes while maintaining desired level of capacity for serving your users. Well, that concludes my topic on how you can use ECS to manage containers at scale. The slide shows some of our customers who are already using ECS for their production workloads. These customers include financial organizations such as Capital One and large internet businesses such as Expedia. You can learn about how they use ECS by going to our website. If you'd like to learn more, you can get more information at aws.amazon.com slash ECS. You can also follow our ECS blog, which is given as a link on the slide. If you'd like to gain hands-on experience with AWS, please watch our instructional videos and explore the self-paced labs. You can attend our instructor-led classes and learn how to design, deploy, and operate highly available, cost-effective, and secure applications on AWS. You can get more info by visiting the URL, awsamazon.com slash training. So thank you for attending this session. I hope you found it interesting. Do provide us with your feedback and let us know how we can improve the event experience for you in the future. Goodbye.